Hi guys, thanks for joining us. As you can see, I've got my mate uh, Adam with me and also the PDC referee, Jack. Uh, just going to have a little bit of fun tonight. We've got some really cool giveaways as well. Uh, we're going to be doing a 180 giveaway. Um, every time there's a 180 tonight, I'm going to put £2 in the prize fund. I've also got a magazine to give away. I've got some T-shirts to give away. And we're just going to have some banter and some talking points. This isn't going to cost me like a few hundred quid tonight. <laughs> there won't be that many 180s. I reckon that's... How many do you reckon it'll be? Oh, I don't know. 10 a game? 4 games? 40? No, there <laughs> won't be 10 a game. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. That was, that was a good... A good I reckon, I reckon there'll be about... I reckon there'll be about 20. What, 21 80s? 40 yeah. Quid. Yeah, I reckon... Ooh, I reckon, I, I reckon I'll be around... I hit 21 80s on his own. Mm, yeah, old Andy Bolton. Still went out. Charlie the Boss Grey, evening. Yeah. So what about all the how Barney finished off his career? That was embarrassing. That was so bad. <laughs> For me, it was the interview at the end when he was just like, uh, he didn't want to say anything, did he? No, Do you know no. what I mean? And, but what got me is, is when they said, have you got anything to say for your fans? I thought that he still could have said something well, they to were, all they, them people at that point. They were trying point. to prompt him, weren't they? But he was gutted. He was probably didn't want the interview. He put a nice thing on uh, social media today, didn't he? But I think really, in hindsight, he'd do that interview all over again. But I think he just wanted to... Well, of out, course, like. he'd go. I was surprised. Well, he didn't come out and speak originally, yeah. did he? And then he, he came out afterwards. They actually asked him to be on there last night as uh, again, but you can see why he didn't. But uh, nobody's going to remember that night anyway. We're all going to remember him for the you know, five-time champion of the world and that, aren't we? Yeah, but he said... Um, well, Sky said, oh, we're not going to interview him because we don't want to... Whatever, and then the next thing we know, he's on TV. Come straight from the adverts, he oh, was on TV, yeah. weren't he? It's just so bad. And they know not to do that. Well, because obviously last time, do you remember when he had the interview, um, when he was going to retire instantly, and yeah. all, all the new sponsors that were in there, then he had to backtrack the next day, didn't he? Yeah, but I said, when he quit that first time, they should have just, just let him do it, because he was quite lucky, really, that he even made it to the Worlds, because his last game could have been in... In Wigan, <laughs> yeah, on a qualifier losing yeah. to Ronnie Hybrex in the last thirty-two of the thing. That that, that would be a terrible. Do you think that? Out. Do you think that he should have finished in Rotterdam on that massive high? You know, he should, he should have finished when he actually quit the first time. I think. More, more importantly, Bob to Bob in the comments has said Adam is well fit. Yes. Bob, Bob, you need to go to Specsavers. <laughs> Love you, Bob. <laughs> I'll give you my glasses. <laughs> Definitely needs to go to Specsavers. <clears throat> Janet says, interview shouldn't have been done. Imagine being that guy the five minutes after being interviewed. Yeah. yeah. I, Sky I, knew that as well, though, didn't they? Yeah. It was silly. I, really silly. I had people say to me, like, it's like when the boxer loses or it's just being knocked out. They yeah, go no, of course they them. don't. But that's what media do, isn't it? You know, yeah. me, media know... That, that video that they put live had insane amount of views the next day. It's, it's, it's just what the media does. But I just think it's a shame for him. I think he'll give it a week or so and then he'll just reflect on it and he'll realise, actually, I've had a great career. I don't know if you see the one in the press room afterwards. Do you see bits of that? No. Well, I see that. They um, showed sure a clip of that and he was just like, tell me what I've done. And it's like... He said that in the TV interview, didn't he? Yeah. They were like, well, all the stuff you've done for darts is like, have I done anything? So yeah. like, yes, you have. Yeah. His bank account suggests he's done quite a bit for darts, doesn't it? Yeah. So he's going to be all right. That's like Rob Cross as well. When you look at what, you know, he was so flat, wasn't he? It's just, there's something not, I don't know, I know none of us know, but he, he just didn't write at the moment, is he? His action's gone. I think it, I think he do need to go away and see somebody and rebuild. Or, well, maybe he's had a dip. Was it this year he won the World Match Play? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's won the European World Match Play and the so, European Championship. What's the, so, if Gerwin Price gets to the final, yeah. the worst that will happen is Rob Cross drops to number three in the world, isn't it? Rob Cross is number three now. So, right, OK. Yeah, but he's obviously lost 400,000 from two years ago, yeah. hasn't he? I know he's obviously got the match plan and the others, but that's still a, a big chunk. Obviously, I think round two was 15 grand, wasn't it? Yeah, so, so he's going to get 15. 385. 385 off yeah. it. Yeah. And then it all depends. What you've got to bear in mind is it's not just him how much he's lost, it's how much some of these others are yeah. can potentially win. That's when it really uh, showcases, that's the thing, isn't though. it? He's, he'll go below 500 grand, so anyone wins this goes above him. But I think his only competitor was like Michael Smith, who's out as well, so... Who's really going to like, other than going Price and Van Gogh? Yeah, it's, re it's really tough for Michael Smith at the moment. It's just, uh, he he's fighting his own battle. He's not able to play darts, is he? Not, did you watch the game last night? Yeah, apparently he had a broken toe as well. Yeah. 
Right. Didn't they say he broke something like 20 pounds in his yeah, body or something? Right, David Nunn, outside of Price and MVG, who do you lads fancy for the title? I really think Durant can go far. Yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? I'm not sure, but I think that he'd go all the way. Do you know what I mean? I'd put somebody like Daryl Gurney probably before him. I think Peter Wright, um, you know, if he could get over the line against some players, he's got a bit of a mental block a lot of the time, hasn't he? But Durant's a good bet, isn't he? Quality yeah, player. He was, he was 33 to 1. I think, I think that's still a bit a bit short. I'd, I'd, if I was going to put money on him, I'd want it 50. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll make my mind up on Anderson after tonight, I think. Yeah, this is going to be tough for him. But, um, what's his name? Dolan's actually playing right. Mm. I actually did a video on four players that I don't think could win the Worlds, and I got a little bit of flack from it. Um, in, you know, I don't think Gary Anderson can win it this year because I don't think he's played enough. Um, he doesn't do the European Tour. He's been really choosy with the Players' Championship. He was really off at the Grand Slam, when he? Ended bottom in his group. I think it's, a, it's just a matter of time. I just think he's a family man. I want to go and have time yeah. with his kids, get away from it. Yeah. I think I think Aspinall's come on leaps and bounds as a player. Yeah, I, I rate Aspinall. He's brilliant, man. He's quality. He's hungry as well, isn't he? He's like, come, he's I going think, up, isn't I he? think the story from him, when you think... I was, at, I was actually at the UK Open in um, Minehead when he won it against Rob Cross. And, you know, the atmosphere was amazing. And he said he remembers, um, you know, just Ooh. looking out onto the crowd and just thinking where he'd come in that last year because he was actually on the verge. He had no money in his bank account. He was literally at about 15, 20 quid. He actually had to borrow money. He's an accountant by trade. I think he actually had to borrow money uh, to go to something to qualify and it just went from there and he's mm. just played great ever since. He's definitely one for the Premier League this year, isn't oh, he? Yeah. That's my other thing, guys. I'll be doing my Premier League video very soon. Chizzy's transformed since going to Harrow's. Unbelievable uh, difference. Just shows sometimes you just need a change, don't you? I was talking to him the other day, actually. He's like buzzing for the World Championships. He normally don't care about darts. Doesn't he? Well excited Does go. he not? Oh, he just turns up and yeah. plays and don't really care. But... His manager's nice, Roger, isn't he? I chatted with him at um, Milton Keynes earlier this year. He's a well nice guy. Spud Murphy says, uh, what do you think about Gurney could get dropped from the Premier League? No. If he has a bad world. No, I still don't think he will be. Gurney will be in. I think he's too high ranked, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Gurney will be in. It's good for them in Ireland as well. Yeah. Gurney, Gurney will... I think whatever. I think if Gurney went out in the first round, he'd still be in the Premier League. Yeah. Personally. And then, uh, Karen Batten. Gav, I love your videos. I've been a fan for two years now. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Spud Murphy's just put... Well, the Irish don't really like Gurney, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that don't like Gurney. He always... I'm not going to say too much, because uh, I have to be a little bit careful, to be honest with you, because I'll get annihilated. D does he look annoyed to you, and, like, really, at times, just, like, really... What, well, you know, um, just... For, yeah. I don't know what it is. There's something about him at times, and he sort of, sort of, like walks up to the hockey as though he's like got a real chip on his shoulder. Yeah. I don't think it does him any good with the fans. Then when you you know sometimes you speak, you think, oh, he's really nice. But I can see why people have that opinion of him. Yeah. Well, do you remember his? I think it was World Championships when he played Mark Webster, and he was like, he was like. He won the first set and then screamed at Mark while he was walking out, and then he, and then he started losing. And he was literally like walking with his head down the whole time. It was like mm. embarrassing to watch. Really, that was like that. That's what that's what made me like not like him as much. Uh, Sport FC one and Karen Batten have both. Uh, well, one said uh, he's got a strange feeling that Adrian Lewis might turn up this world. So That'd be good. Well. Quality I'd love player. To see AD Lewis Such a nice well. guy as well. Met him at the fishing this year. Really, really lovely guy. And. Karen Batten has said, how do we think AD will do? Because he is her favourite player. AD Lewis is most probably the nicest man in life. <coughs> he's lovely. He is he's, really, really he's, nice. He's my favourite player. Is he? He's oh. such a nice guy to speak to as well. You know, at the fishing, when we was up there at the PDC fishing thing this year, Eli was just chatting to everybody. There were some players that you, you know... He, he caught a big fish at the fishing, and bearing in mind this is a fishing match, yeah. and they are very competitive. And all the kids race. were there. He he would take the fish out of the net and go walking off, showing all the kids Kids, the fish, wouldn't he? He was brilliant. You know, and then put it back, you know, and we were like... 
Yeah, he's just a lovely bloke. Did you know that as his um, wedding anniversary that day? Yeah. Did you see that afterwards? I was like, bloody hell, yeah, Yeah. that's his wedding anniversary. (laughs) What I find interesting is when people talk about Coo School, it's it's how difficult it actually is. You know, we look at where Glenn Durrant is now in the world, you know, seeded for this tournament. Um, He nearly missed out on Coo School. He actually had to cancel an exhibition on the final day. Yeah, I remember. Um, Because... Because he, he wouldn't have got through. And we actually covered a bit in one of the magazines about it. Um, I forgot the guy's name now. But he actually had dart, uh, darts to actually put them in. Matt, Matt, Matt Edgar did. No, it wasn't Matt Edgar. Was it not? No. Oh, it was Matt Edgar. Just do what Andrew Gildon does at Q schools. Just go through on the first day. Yeah. Oh, and then go sit in your hotel room for the rest of the week eating Chinese. Well, I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> Are you sure you won't play on the Xbox? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, got, he's got his PC set up in his room. Yeah. He the time. He, he's, he's addicted to his games, isn't he? He, well, does, he does love his games. But Gildin, he qualified for Q School day one, and then come back the next day, and they're like, Andrew, what are you doing? He's like, well, I paid for four days. They're like, you can't play. You're already through. <laughs> what, did he really go back? Yeah, then? apparently. Darren was telling me. He's, he is a hero. What a man. What a dark player. And uh, even, uh, like, Gary Plummer said, he's one of his favourite players yeah. to watch, didn't he? So, I think it's the thumbs up him. as he well as the old gold finger. The thumbs up, the walk all the way over there to stab the hockey. Yeah. And, uh, I, I'm lucky, been so lucky to play darts with that guy for years. And it was good when you brought him round here for the night as well. We had a right laugh. It was the story about the pot noodle that got me. Yeah. You know, when he filled it up with the radio. Have you heard that one? Uh, do you tell him about no, the... Was, who was that? That was with Darren Webster. Richie Burnett. That was Richie Burnett. Was it Richie uh, Burnett? Richie was that Darren Webster? I've no. heard Richie Burnett's done it. Yeah, Richie Burnett tried to do a pot noodle with a radiator water because they didn't have a kettle. Uh, Gil, Darren Webster nearly killed Gildin, didn't he? Because yeah. Gildin has sleep nap, nap or whatever it's called. Uh, so he has to wear the mask and Webster was saying it was annoying and noisy so he turned it off or something. <laughs> you know, like. No, well, Darren... <laughs> So, right, this is a story. Darren's, I, I will never get bored of listening to Darren's stories. They're the funniest thing. But so Gildan's got his, his sleep apnea mask right? Yeah. And, um, and it's like four in the morning, Darren's woken up, because obviously it's quite loud. So he's, he's like, oh, I'm going to go downstairs, have a cigarette, and come back up again. So anyway, he, he, walk, he walked to the door, pulled the key out of, out of the door, and then went to walk, went to go out the door, and then he just heard Gildan going... <laughs> <laughs> like that, and he's like, shit, I've killed him! <laughs> and chucked the key back in the thing. So obviously all the electric went out. Yeah. Yeah. So, we've got some more questions. Janet Hills just said Q School is a minefield. Yes, it, yeah, it is. is. Uh, Charlie wants to know, Gav, what are your thoughts about what's going on with the BDO? We haven't really got... Uh, we could do a whole another evening on yeah, that. Yeah, really, I think we? so. I've, it's <laughs> I, the, whole, the whole thing from start to finish, the BDO, is just... It's just madness in my eyes. They've not got the right people to run it. Upset so many different people. Um, I've still heard that the worlds aren't going ahead because the prize fund's not there. Honestly, I heard that a couple of days ago. Not saying from an inside source, but I sort of heard that they're, the prize fund's not there. Um, I like um, John's comment. Yeah, I was going to say, John Clark's comment. Obviously, I'm okay, but you two need to get yourself down to Primark. And get yourself cut a pair of jeans. Obviously, I don't <laughs> stop in Primark, but... Um, sport, I might go and get myself a beer in a minute. Sport FC 1, what's your favourite tournament that you've ever visited and who's the nicest player you've ever met? So, for me, without doubt, two of them, Gildin and A.D. Lewis, are the nicest two men you will ever meet. And it annoys me when people slag them off on social media because they clearly haven't ever met them because they yeah. wouldn't ever do it if they had. And favourite tournament, lucky enough to have gone to that three or four times. And every time I've loved it. Uh, for me, I've been really lucky. I've been to quite a few tournaments. Um, but I think my favourite person that I've met is Hendo. I absolutely love everything. Yeah, He's such a nice guy. He always speaks to you. He'll give you all the time in the world. Uh, Tournament-wise, a lot of people say the world match play is their favourite. Um, but... I don't know whether it's because I was Devin Peterson's guest last year at the Ali Pali, but I went VIP a few times, um, and it was absolutely incredible. I had a great, great uh, few times down there. Question for Gav from Joe Williams. Now, Gav, you're a bit of a dark player whore, really, with your favourite players, how you go through them. Um, Who said that? And no, Did I'm Joe say that, that or you Joe's say that? Joe just said, is Peter Wright your still favourite player? No. Or or are you still a Corey Caffey fan? Or I'm going to predict you're going to say Gerwin Price now, aren't you? Who's your favourite player now? Gerwin Price. 
Yeah, I like. He likes I, the bad boys. I like the bad boys in darts. <laughs> I do, because there is some games, right? That if I'm gonna, and I've said it a million times on my channel, there's some games that if I'm gonna go and make a cup of tea or get a beer. I'll do it when there's certain players on. I wouldn't do it when Gerwin Price was on. I, I love Corey Cabby. I'm not going to go in, into it in this live video, but some of, for those of you that have not seen the comments from uh, Corey Cabby on Facebook, go and check them out because it's just absolutely incredible. Make of it what you want. I don't know if you've seen them. Like, so I don't want to cover it on a live video, but it's... I like Corey Cabby. I think he was a, a massive talent. And, and obviously everything's been pulled by the looks of it from Target and everything. He's not on there as a player or anything now. Have you seen it? Everything's gone. I think you won't see him for a little while. I don't know why. And, yeah, is it I'll... too good a player, though? He's, he's, he just does silly things. Yeah. Joe Williams, thoughts on Ryan Meekle at the weekend. Gutted, mate. He's a friend of ours. Um, love Ryan's bits. Started yeah. awesome, playing brilliant in the first set. Did he think? Do you think he just thought about it? He'd won that set and then thought about it, no? I didn't, I didn't watch the game, but I heard, I heard that the guy he was playing was just stopping and... All, like, walking did, back all the time. Did you see the guy he was playing in the crowd last night? He was in the mask Yeah, you reckon he's crazy? <laughs> the Rey Mysterio <laughs> yeah. mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I think uh, you will be seeing a lot more of Ryan Meekle in the future. I mean, he had a good run at the uh, thing the other way. Yeah, he, he did. did. Play attention. Play attention. And, um, yeah. Ryan's got it. He's just Ryan's got it in every way. He's just a ridiculously nice lad. A handsome lad. Um, he sounds got, a bit like got, me, got, got and he's got a good head on him, and the family that's around him—his brother, his you know, his dad, and all his friends—he's just got everything going for him. And um, to be honest with you, if Ryan doesn't make it, it's probably just because he can only blame himself, really. What's happened to Burton at the moment? Just because I know they they sort of play, yeah. all play at the smock, don't you? No, uh, well, we play in the smock Grand Prix, but they play Super League together. Yeah, the same Super League <laughs> team, Burton and Ryan and stuff, and. Um, yeah, but it's still playing brilliantly. I mean, yeah, lost his, lost his tour card, didn't he? Didn't, yeah. get, didn't get, didn't get, didn't get it back, but finished fourth on the challenge tour. Yeah, was that last year? He was on stage against Michael Van Gogh, yeah. wasn't it? You could, was it played you really could, well. Yeah, he played really well. Did play really well. Uh, well, he played pretty well in the Worlds last year against um, Searle, didn't he? But yeah. Searle just had a good. Searle had quite a good run that year last year, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He got to the last sixteen or thirty. He's had a he's had a nightmare year, Searle, though, hasn't he? Yeah, I've not really seen his name anywhere. No, he's had a really bad, bad year. Uh, but Mace has uh, practiced with him because he's local to Chris. Right, so they've actually yeah. practiced together and he reckons Searle's actually playing quite well again at the well, minute. Mace is but, playing well anyway, isn't he? Chris is practicing yeah. well. But I think this, this is where I think probably the World Championship's wrong because I'm just, you know, if you look, right, two years ago, Jamie Lewis, he was, he was going to give up in 2017. Yeah, or, yeah. He was going to give up, he tweeted, he got to the Worlds had that massive run, got to the semi-finals, pocketed all that money. And because it works on this two-year ranking, it looks after players that can then potentially have just one really good run in the world due to the prize money. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Are you a fan of the two-year um, order of merit, how it works? Uh, do you think the Premier League contender will happen again? That's Chris Welsh. I hope it does. <coughs> I think it would give a little bit of edge to it. I think it got a bit stale. I yeah. liked it. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Oh, I liked I it. Was right. like, I think the Hendo Mar night in Aberdeen. I don't just agree with much that Mardle says on the TV, but Mardle, uh, like a lot of people moaned about it, and Mardle said no, it'll work, and everyone said no, it won't, and he was right because he called it from the start. He said it worked. I thought it was brilliant. So Charlie again, question for Gavin, Adam, and Jack: Who are your ten players for the Premier League this year? Um, I, I think Ian White's got to have a spot. But the rest of them, pretty much the same as, isn't it? I don't know who will get rid of to put Ian. Ian White know. can't go in. I don't think Ian White Unfortunately, can go in. because of the bad run in the world. Ian White can't go in. Ch you know, he'll be replaced with Chizzy. Chizzy will get back in it if he carry yeah. on as he is. Um, why he just... I'm not sure it would do him any good. In all honesty, being on telly in front of them crowds week in, week out. He, he struggles, doesn't he? Bud Murphy, White would get pummeled every week if he was in the Premier League. Well... We'll never know unless he gets given a chance. Um, yeah, but how can they give him a chance, Ad? How? I, know, how, I mean, like, I think I, I know he's amazing on the floor, and I think if they were going to give him a chance last year, it was a real kick mm. in the teeth to contenders. How did some of them come in, like Glenn Durrant, um, get into it, and and you know Steve Lennon? I know they tried to keep the place well, sort of local to a certain 
Hello, the prize fund's going up, guys. Bear with, with me. Um, I think with Ian, I think um, he's he's that good, but for some reason, like we were saying earlier, I mean, he lost to 100 average this time, So, and people say he bottled it. Well, he didn't, did he? He averaged 100. It's just a case of, for some reason, it just doesn't happen for him in the, on the TV event. Um, Jack Hill, it's unfortunate because a good run in the world elevates you for a bit. But if you don't back it up, it can really bite you, which is unfortunate. Which we've yeah, seen in the past, a lot exactly. of people when they come to defend their money. Well, that's right, Jamie. That's why I said I don't think it works because you can have somebody that have a free tournament, you know, get insane brand surprise me. That's like um, what's his name, Benito van der Paz went on a little bit of a run last year. How, how the sort of door opened for him, didn't it? And give him, I think that's what uh, allowed him to keep his tour card, well, weren't it? The losers of the first round of this are picking up the same amount of money as you would in winning a pro tour event. Almost, yeah, seven yeah, and a half. Yeah, but, uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, yeah ten yeah, rounds to win a pro tour. And you get seven and a half out in the I first round tall. now. And Ev's Vlogs has said, are they doing the contenders or is it just going to be 10? Do we know? Does anyone know? Uh, nobody do. I tried to find out. I did a video on it the other day about the contenders, yes or no. It's sort of pretty mixed. Um, I don't think it will go ahead, honestly. Although I want it to. I just want to see Hendo's walk on again in Scotland, don't you, yeah. anyone? How much beer was on the floor that night? <laughs> I mean, that, what, I mean... No one wants to be Scottish today, but that night you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> that was good. You'd have been caught on the long lick in the carpet, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I mean, he came out with bagpipes as well, everybody. I mean, that was just amazing. Wasn't it? That was I'd brilliant. actually, that was funny. I'd actually seen Hendo two weeks before that up in Minehead and actually at a Weatherspoons. He just happened to be there and I didn't have him before. And he said to me, Gav, he said, just to let you know, don't tell anybody, but I'm going to be coming out with all the bagpipes and everything. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Oh, it was brilliant amazing, moment. Amazing. We'll find out. Have you put some glitter on your beard, Ad, for yes, this uh, video? For, for the TV cameras only. <laughs> now, I went out Saturday <laughs> night, <laughs> yeah. and what happened was, there was a lady. <laughs> you had, you had put them on. To put glitter all over my face. Have you not washed since then, then? Yes, I've washed, three, <laughs> I've washed quite a lot of times since then. He hasn't. I and, can uh, tell he hasn't. You should sit me in a shower before I come over here. I'm just scrubbing my face. So it anyway, suits you, though. This lovely lady who scraped me with glitter. Uh, yesterday, I went Christmas shopping in Norwich to get a few bits and bobs. And I was walking around the shops <laughs> and got some very lovely smiles from not just the ladies, but also some lovely looking men oh, right. as well. Um, and then realised that I was looking fabulous <laughs> with my glitter. Do so, yeah. yeah. Based on based on this year alone, Glenn Durrant would be sixth in the All America. Yeah. Well, there you go. So and that would almost he, put you in the Premier deserves, League, wouldn't it? He deserves a spot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's an amazing debut. What was Bunton's debut? Because he did well. He won. I mean, he won one Pro Tour or something, didn't he? I think he won. He won didn't one, he win two. like the the second one he went he into? Won the or second something. one. He beat Gildan in the final. Gildan as well, well, didn't he? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he went just done Taylor. Yeah. Gildan. Gildan that day beat. Like four world champions, didn't he? Like he beat Barney Lewis, Barney Taylor, Lewis, Taylor uh, and also Wade. He beat that day, and then he got Bunting in the final. And um, so we got Bunting in the final, and weren't they neck and neck? And Gildan was on a finish, and Bunting went one eighty, one sixty out, didn't he? So three hundred one, one eighty one, one, six one. Yeah, so three hundred and forty one in six starts. So. What was the average that Gildan had against MPG that time? Was that hundred and something? Wasn't it? 100 it was like thirteen or fourteen, yeah, weren't it? And still lost, didn't he? Because when he played, that he got the good the average. UK Open semi final, wasn't yeah. it? And Gildan averaged a hundred odd against him, and Van Gogh. And when they got backstage after the game, Van Gogh walked up to Gildan and went, "Don't ever do that to me again." That's what he said to Gildan. Yeah, based on this year alone. The, the Premier League should be Van Gerwen, Rob Cross, Mark Smith, Gerwin Price, Nathan Aspinall, Glenn Durrant, Dave Chisnell, Peter Wright, Ian White, Daryl Gurney. Where's that James should... Wade? James Wade, 11th. I'm surprised that Lewis is up there. He's in 14th. It just shows how good a year he's had, doesn't it? <coughs> yeah. But that's the thing, though. When when players are decent, then they have to then they then they have a year where they're not playing well. They're they're defending so much money. Okay, Chris Welsh, where does Barney rank in the greatest of all time? And John Clark's answered it underneath it, saying uh, fifth him. I'm trying to think who we were. I mean, obviously Taylor is the greatest of all time. I I wish I'd put Bristow as the second and Barney the third. I think Van Gogh ranks above Barney. <clears throat> Not yet, but he will. I, I think he does already. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think one, Barney's. I think one, Barney's one always had a lot now, more support, ever. hasn't he? Barney's won one PBC World Championship. Yeah, that's true, actually. Okay, so if we go with Jax, what are you going? You going Taylor? Who's two? Oh, Taylor's always won. Yeah, Taylor's won. <laughs> You can't leave Bristow out for what he done in his time yeah, as well. I, I, you know, I, Eric Bristow could only do what he. I think I think at, at, in front of you at the time. Really do you know what I mean? And I you think, think Bristow uh, goes goes two? Yeah. But then after that, I'd put I MVG anyway. then Barney. I put I put MVG third. Yeah, I agree with that. I put Barney fourth. I don't know. Luke Mayo, I've just come across this channel, quite unique. I like the concept. Keep it up. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Thank mate. you very much for subscribing. Yeah. Well, I hope you've subscribed. Yeah, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Hit that old subscribe button. Okay, Janet Hill's answered that question. He's gone Taylor, Bristow. See, same order as me, Jack. Taylor, Bristow, Van Marnefelt. Then Van Gerwen, then Lowe, and then put Part in there. Great shot. He's a forgotten I man, isn't John Part, Part? I think Part deserves to be in. Three time world champion. Yeah, do you remember? The top 10. <laughs> yeah, do you remember when Part um, was in the sky and they always go on about it and they hadn't put him on the wall? Yeah. yeah. Remember, it's right though, because they put all the world champions on the wall and missed and him out. And put Part in yeah. there. And even, I noticed the other night when he was in the studio, they showed a clip of all the world champions and Part weren't in the clip. Yeah. And they went back, they cut back to the talk. And if I was Part, I'd be like, yeah. Like, he did well, really. He carried on with it. Maybe he obviously not saw the clip, I suppose. But I'd have been like, why am I not in that? You know what yeah, I mean? The funniest, the funniest thing was, cause it was, it was, I remember it was Ladbrokes back then who, who sponsored it. And I think they, they must have obviously done all of the um, all of the graphics and stuff for around the tournament, all the yeah. world championships. They did get him on and, the wall, though. Yeah, they got him on the wall, but he had, like, the whitest teeth ever. They were, like, glow-in-the-dark he looks, they look, look well funny, but they were like glowing the, glow in the dark, his teeth. It's nice, I, I quite like him as a pundit as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, he's, I, I he's don't really mind him at all. Who is your favourite pundit? Just out of, of interest. All, of all time? Yeah. Sid, Sid Waddell. Sid Waddell, yeah. yeah. What about current ones? Do you prefer Sky Setup or ITV4? Sky. Uh, I've got a few coming in again now. Uh, Mac Willow, opinions on MVG. I don't like him. Very arrogant, isn't he? Yeah, but I suppose um, you can be if you're as good as, as as what he is. He's not the most popular guy amongst dart players, but take nothing away from him. He's a special talent and amazing dart player. But he's not bad, is he? <laughs> I think the thing is, it's I don't like arrogant in anybody to be totally honest with you. But if you are that good, then you can afford to be. It's when you get somebody that's very arrogant that's actually not very good at yeah. something. That's what really annoys me. I think me. to be honest with you, like. Bristow, Taylor, yeah. John Lowe, yeah. Jockey Wilson, Bob Anderson, Bob Ad all were very arrogant. Keith Deller. It, oh, Keith De well, yes, still is. <laughs> they were all very arrogant, yeah. but that's why they were world champions, you know, and top players in the world. Joe Williams wants to know if, I'm assuming it's you, Jack, uh, are you uh, doing the Pro Tour marking next year? Are you going back on there? I'll let you tell this story, Jack. No. <laughs> Why not? It's not. I'm not doing it anymore. I had enough of that. Do they pay you well? Um, I don't know. I don't know what they pay now. They used to pay hundred pound a day, which was like pretty good actually. But you have to pay for your own hotels and stuff. But you could you could easily make money off a of Pro Tour weekend marking. Easy. But no. Nah. Yeah, but by the time you've travelled up there, where are they? Like, say, Wigan or somewhere. Wigan, by the time you go yeah. from here, your travelling's got to be 30 quid petrol, a yeah. night away, and then you get 100 quid, then you've got to eat and drink. Surely you're almost doing it for nothing, just to fund oh, yeah. yourself, aren't you, you? You could make money doing it, but if you wanted to enjoy yourself, you wouldn't make any money. But it's all part of, <laughs> it's all part of the experience, though. Yeah. It's like getting there and marking for like, the best phone in the world. That's why I did it. When did I, you get nervous was, to start off with? Yeah. My, I've, I've, I would say I've been nervous twice. And that was the first time I ever marked game and the first time I ever marked for Phil Taylor. Only two times I've ever been nervous. But Did I've you made any mistakes? Though. I've made a few mistakes here and there. A couple of funny ones. Phil Taylor pen lid one. That's a good one. What was that? He was... Um, Basically, I, I dropped I dropped the pen lid. It was on the hardwood floor as well, not not carpeted. 
I dropped the pen lid as he was as he was about to throw, and it was like, you know, have you, did you watch in between us? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you know when they're shouting people at the people shouting things at the people waiting for the bus. Yeah. And then that bloke turned up and throttles him, and he's like going, "Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> yeah. sorry." That's what it was like for me. Oh right. Jacob Ke- uh, Luke Mayo, Jacob Kelly, the new Rob Cross. So I reckon he could be. I'll see. Well, as we all know, the Rob Cross story is great, isn't it? Who did Rob Cross beat in the UK Open qualifers, Gav? Is it you? <laughs> if only, if I'd have won. Isn't that a crazy story, though? For him, he wasn't even going to go, and then yeah. his uncle dragged him out of bed. He went all the miles down to Norwich, ended up playing in it. Nobody knew who he was. Smashed everybody on the day. Didn't drop. He didn't drop a, a leg hardly, did Not he? Not really many. I mean, he um. He, uh, that day, uh, obviously I knew like Kevin Rudland who runs the Norwich UK Open qualifier and he said, uh, like a few times he said, uh, there's a bloke who's just beat so-and-so, no idea who he is, do you know who he is? And I said, no, I'd never really seen much of him before. Um, and then I'd, I think we got to about the last 16 stage and I played him and I think his worst leg was 15 darts. I think really? he gave me 12, 12, 13, 15, something like that. And I literally shook his hand and went, pleasure to play against you, mate. What a player. Um, and then the next time I saw him, he's uh, doing that great run in the UK. <coughs> but then rest, rest is history, history yeah. Mate. Made me laugh after he won. There was photos of him like winning 20 quid in the pub, weren't there? Like two years previous. And there he was, holding 400 grand, being world champ. Yeah, absolutely buzzing. It's really nice. Do you know what I mean? That people do appreciate... Because it is fun doing the chat. I don't think, like, you're now starting out. I don't think anybody realise how much effort actually goes into a yeah. YouTube channel. I actually worked out, and this is no word of a lie, I spend about 40 hours a week. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. Oh, I've seen you do yeah. it. You know, every single week. But I do it because I love to do it. And I'm lucky that I'm in a position to be able to do it. I remember Kirk Shepherd, who's played my local. Kirk Shepherd, yeah. Yes. Well, he was the one who um, lost in the final to Park, weren't he? Yeah. Kung Fu Man. He'd be quite good if he didn't get so, they reckon, didn't get so pissed. Be yeah, I was heard that he, he turns up to the Pro Tours and he's absolutely smashed on like, on the chance on wine before he even get there. Well, I'll tell you a story. Doesn't Kirk Shepherd is the reason why players aren't allowed to bring alcohol into the venue anymore. Really? Yeah. What, he used to get that smashed? He used to just, well, everyone, everyone brought alcohol into the venue. You're not allowed to because it's against like licensing and stuff. But everyone let, the, the, the officials always let people do it because they knew it happened. But he brought so much in that they actually banned it. Josh Doyd, Fartman, one ninety nine. He wants a magazine as well. There you go. <laughs> magazine for you. Um, <laughs> ooh, magazine. Uh, oh yes, he's got a magazine coming. The guys in the comments would like to know if these magazines are going to be signed. Do you dislike any players? Chris Welsh says. I do, but I daren't say here on yeah. the channel. But there oh, is at least five or six players. But I've been to events, and I'm telling you, they are not nice people. They think they're better than you. They don't want to speak to you. It's, yeah, I ain't going to mention it. I get enough stick from managers as it is. Always getting stick. Tell you what, in all my years of marking, the only person to not shake my hand was Jan Decker. I think they'd all, oh, the jacket. Yeah, the waistcoat. Yeah, the I think that they'd all. Most of them would have thought done that, but there's some players that generally are quite happy. I'll tell you who I had a night out with. We was when we was in Minehead. Um, I had a night out with um on a few beers with Scotty Baker, and he is the nicest guy, the mod yeah, that you'll so ever get to meet. And I was speaking to him about, you know, do you get nervous when you go up there? And he reckon he plays best darts. He doesn't change, and he's just a normal person, got a full time job, and was happy to go out and have a few beers. Well, everyone's panicking now, thinking, how do they get the magazines? Ooh, the mag! Ooh, Ooh magazines! magazines. Well, maybe you <laughs> will, maybe you won't get them. You need to make shirts that say all magazines on them. Yeah, I'll get some shirts done. People now want to know who we voted for. Do you know what? They're all dicks. <laughs> so I didn't vote for any. What, this year? You didn't vote? No. I, I got so much flap. I didn't vote even. Should I tell Why you did that? I vote for someone I hate? Shall I tell you, all of them. and I'm going to put it out there now, and it'll make me look silly, and I really don't care. You know I'm thick-skinned, I wouldn't do this otherwise. Um, 
But the reason I don't vote is because I don't follow it enough to understand yeah, what I would be voting for. Now, I think, personally, that this country, this is just my opinion, have got too many youngsters that vote because they're being told who to vote for, yeah. that they vote for who their parents voted for. Exactly. And if you actually sit there now and say, why did you vote for them? They'd say, mm, I didn't know. So I think it's more irresponsible to vote when you don't know what you're voting for. Do you know what? It's actually... I am so thick-skinned. I think if you can laugh at yourself and watch the videos back, then it's half the battle. There was a great one the other week. There was a guy that come on there and he said to me, Gav, you clearly eat loads of burgers and different things and McDonald's. And I went back with, yeah, but also KFC, Burger King and Kebab. Rate your top five 180 calls from current PBC refs. My favourite is Paul Hinks, without a doubt. I like Paul Hinks. I think he's the best 180. George Noble's good, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I'd say Paul Hinks number one. Paul Hinks number one for me. George Noble, I quite like. Russ Bray is as unique. I'm not a lover of. Um, I don't. I'm not a lover of Kirk's. I love his one seven seven. I don't like Kirk's yeah. one eighty. I also don't like who wear as a ref. Not. I'm just being honest. I. I don't think he was doing something at mine. Ed, nice guy, but George Noble thinks he's the best ref. <clears throat> Why is he not a nice guy? Paul Hinks is the best. Paul Hinks is. is Ad, do, do Paul Hinks as 180. Oh. Go on, this is brilliant, guys. Listen to ads. Paul Hinks 180. 180! Yeah, someone said Bruce Spenley, but the question was current, so, but I would have put Bruce number two. Maybe even number one. Yeah. No. I can't remember. Freddie Shepard. Who's your favourite? Freddie Shepard was the greatest ever, in my opinion. Is it Freddie Shepard? Freddie oh, Shepard. <laughs> is he a cricket umpire? <laughs> Freddie. I bet he's got it totally wrong. You ain't got Freddie Williams. Freddie <laughs> Shepard. Where did Shep from? Freddie Williams. <laughs> That's before my time, Matt. Well, well, that... Circus Tavern days, old boy glasses. Adam's he was the one. Adam's gone. Freddie Shepard. Freddie Shepard. So and then he goes, one who's seven Freddie Shepard? Do yeah, I mean one, Freddie Williams? <laughs> Joe Williams gave me a solid eight for that. Thank you, mate. Oh, my God. Michael Tab. That's so really... And he's got cheesy footballs. Do you know what I mean? That is incredible. It's Freddie Williams. I'm sure it is. Anyway, something like that. The original one from back in the day. He hasn't got a clue. He's I'm sure it is. <laughs> he knows he don't know. Now. Why, the boy, why don't you Google it? Oh, I'm not doing that. Google it. Who's the old BDO referee? Oh, a short guy. No, the one, the one who was like Balls racist. Like, one. <laughs> oh, Jim Bowen. No, no, that was, bad, it? No, that, no. Was, that was Tony Green. Tony Green, Green that was. That was Tony Green. The one, the one who ended up, oh, uh, Fitz Morris, Martin Fitz Morris or something. <laughs> yeah, Josh Doyle got it right. Freddie Shepard was a, he was, he was the cricket umpire, wasn't it? He was Dickie Bird, wasn't it? Fartland, <laughs> uh, do you know this Joe Williams? I don't. Gab does. Freddie Williams, there we go. Thank you, Luke Mayo. I knew it was Freddie. Freddie Williams. <laughs> What would Freddie Shepard say? Freddie Shepard wouldn't like it. <laughs> He'd do this, wouldn't he? He wouldn't, no. Freddie Shepard. <laughs> 180! <laughs> I can't Toby help. Green. <laughs> Tony Green. Toby Green. Both good old boys. Tony Green, eh? God, he's a terrible, he's a terrible commentator, isn't he? Bless him. Yeah, he's not good, is he? He gets all the out shots wrong. That's the best bit. He's worked in darts all his life. Do, you know, on the balls, I, I, I am really sad, right? Sometimes if I see on gold or not gold, on whatever, on the ch game shows on Sky, I will sit and watch Bullseye back just for the speedboats when they come on. And it's like, where do you live? And they live in Birmingham. And then they win a speedboat at the end. But the amount of times when people actually, like, scored... And you could clearly see it weren't in the treble 20 or was. He'd, miss, on. he'd even miss call on bullseye. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you missed about the darts, really. I'm just saying the comments. <laughs> what, what, no. You're brilliant, aren't Which one? Which one? <laughs> what do you think of Tony's shirt? I don't know, I've had lo loads of people in my chat yesterday were talking about Dome's shirt. What's, what's weird about it? 
I can't see. I'm hoping there's just like loads going on in it, all to do with. <clears throat> Did you see the one he wore in the Grand Slam? No. Like with all the cogs, I think it was all to do with the history maker, wasn't it? Anderson's playing with his noir dart. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if he never hit that double in, double out, nine dart, I don't know what, what yeah. his gimmick would be. Yeah. Literally, he's got he's got the date of the, the nine dart on the back of his collar as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, we both know someone who dines out on something for the past 30, 40 years. It's a 138 finish, isn't it? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Michael Lamira, what football teams do you support? I'm an Ipswich fan, for all my sins. Jack? Football? Not really a football man, are you really? West Ham. West Ham. So, so no. And on New Orleans. And I'm a gooner, for my sins. Uh, Joe Williams, Coo School being streamed <laughs> next year. Fancy it, Animal Gav. Well, I'd like to be thinking I'm playing in it, but... Um, so I'll see you there. Are you going? Are you going, you Ad? Honestly, not this one. No, he's going next year. Or does he mean? Well, he's doing next, next year. Oh, no, I'm not going this year. Then <laughs> next year, no, year after. You said that last year, though. I'll keep saying it every year. Is it we're not playing for, uh, captain and team? We're not playing. No. <clears throat> I I like being involved in darts, but I hate playing darts now. So I'd much rather captain it and let everyone else play and be be the captain that wins everything. Well, I've got a good, good I've got <laughs> the a captain that win everything yeah. and don't play. I've got I've got a bit of a knack of putting together a decent side. Well, people don't people who don't realise Jack's my Super League captain. Yeah. And we've got a, we had uh, you don't know, do you? Ash Coleman um, last Tuesday won three 0 with a this is one dart average three one as well. Three one, away. sorry, with a one dart average of thirty four fifteen. So what's that? Hundred and. Honestly, did he? Is he that good? He was really good when he came. You wound him up all night, though. It's because I kept beating him. He didn't like it, did he? Joe's just saying about how um, bad it could be at Q School next time. How many players do I reckon are going to be there next year, Joe? 500 plus? 600? But he's just said about um, how you can have Webster versus Painter, which yeah. only a few years ago was a major final. Yeah. Could be classed as a major final. Uh, He's saying it shows the huge decline of top players. I don't think it necessarily shows the decline of top players. It just shows it's like anything. Shows the quality of the new, new ones coming through. It's the new people coming through. Everyone's got to come to an end at some point. Yes, Webster, he's he'll come back again. He's young enough to. But Painter, if you're a young up and coming player going to Q School and you're looking at that pro tour and you get on that pro tour, it's people like Kevin Painter and those type of players. You've got to be turning up thinking, I'm having your spot. Yeah. You're going, I'm coming in. You know, and that's how it works. I had someone ask a good question yesterday, and that was, um, what are they going to do with Barney's tour card place? Where is that going to go? Yeah, next to Q School. Yeah, just next to is it, what, what side? Is it going to be rest of the world Q School? Like it should be because the rest yeah. of the world players gone out, or they're going to give it to the UK, UK Q School? Uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say I reckon they'd give it to the UK one. Yeah, they? I think they would. I think they should give it to rest of the world. Yeah, but I think they would give it to the UK. Chris Wells, I'd like to see Dave Chisel or James Wade win this. Do you know what? We haven't mentioned Wadey once. We didn't even mention him when we talked <coughs> because about Because that's the same. When you them. talk about stuff, Wadey always go under the rate. It's like in tournaments. He's, uh, he's a great player at being able to play, not at his best, but get results. And he always go under... Like you said, even talking about him, we've not mentioned him, have we? What do you think? One more year for Anderson? One more year for what? Anderson just playing. <clears throat> do you think he'll retire another year or so? How many more years do you reckon he's going to play for? He, clearly, he ain't going to do the Euros next year, 100%. He won't do the Players' Championship or do an odd few. Probably be in the World Series. He's, he's another one. <laughs> they don't, I think that's part of the problem as well is, like, with Taylor, I mean, his hunger for winning and money was what drew him. It wasn't just winning titles. He wanted mm. the money and the fame. Not necessarily the fame, but he wanted it. Anderson's set for life. I think women need to get more involved in darts, and like not men's darts, but in darts. They should be able to play. They should be able to play against each other. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> if they're good enough, that's not age really. It's one of those ones. A lot of people has been a lot with uh, Leighton Bennett about playing on the uh, on the pro tour and the age and different things. If you're old enough, if you're if you're good enough, you're old enough, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think the reason why the PC have got their cap on it is because they don't want like. 11, 12, 13 year olds playing on the, yeah. on the youth tour. No, exactly. 
But no, I'm all for ladies' darts. And like Mikiru's like a mega star out in Japan, isn't yeah, she? You know, it, it's great. And last night I had sheer one, it had just gone mad. Oh, I really wanted that to win. So did I. I think everybody did, didn't they? Everyone did. Yeah. Even Rey Mysterio, didn't he? Yeah. Jackson, what do you guys think of the new Mission Darts range? <laughs> well, if they were to get in contact with me, um, we were looking at doing some reviews for them, but they don't reply to any of our messages today, Adam. They, we've emailed them, so I've not seen them, uh, which surprised me really, especially for a new brand out there. I think they're, exp I think, I think they're a bit tricky saying this. I think they're very expensive for a new brand that's just starting out when you've got somebody like Target and they've got prices around that range, but not really well. They've just sort of come from nowhere, haven't they? What do you think, Adam? No, I think that's the thing. Um, I think if they want to send us some for us to review, I mean, everyone else, all the other companies in the world are sending us stuff. Um, I, I, to be fair, I don't know anyone who's throwing any mission stuff at the minute. Chris Welsh, thoughts on Arteta to Arsenal? I loved Arteta. I mean, he wasn't necessarily would class him as an Arsenal legend or anything <laughs> like that, but... He was a good player for us. and um, Did he play at Everton as well? Yeah, and if they say what they say about him is real, that he's this going to be the next Pep Guardiola and whatnot, then why not give him a go? Because I couldn't name a manager out there who's going to say How can so. they say that he's going to be the next exactly, Pep? Exactly, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's no. crazy. But, I mean, I can't... I couldn't name a manager out there that can sort that mess out at Arsenal. I mean, it's the players. It's not the managers. So get ready now. Question's coming up. It's quite an easy one. I want to watch the uh, chat. Jack will make sure to see who actually put their name down first. So be all over this. Make sure you're all subscribers. Right, in five seconds it's going to be up on the screen. So good luck all. It's a nice little prize, 54 quid. Make sure you tell people... Um, about the channel, right? Five, four, three, two, one. There you go. The one eighty prize run question is: What player has the nickname of a machine gun? There you go, Ross Gawley. Who got it first? Ross Gawley. I think he's in my track. Player. Ross Gawley, you are the winner. You have just won. Yourself fifty four pounds. Congratulations, mate. Oh, a few people didn't know, said so no idea. A few on there, but yeah, Ross Gully, leave your um in the comments below. I'll contact you, I'll sort it out, um, whether it's PayPal or whatever. I'll get back to you once the stream ends. Uh, so please bear with me. Um massive thank you, Ad, for joining us tonight. No problem. PDC referee, check Jack's channel out. Good lad, knows his stuff. Massive thank you to coming around. It's been good, isn't it? It's been no a laugh. Problem. I hope that you enjoyed it, guys. We just tried to do something different tonight. Uh, have a laugh and just have a bit of banter when it was on. So, over and out, guys, and we'll catch you all next time.